Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, we are going to launch Barbell Kerman on the new, I mean, because we haven't launched the Arturus VL before, the new Arturus VL with the Maya space plane on top, and hopefully Barbell Kerman will survive. Well, I mean, the plane worked last time, but it had overheating all over the place, so I'm sweating it here. Okay, and we're doing the suborbital one uh, because it gives some of the confidence, and I have no idea how much confidence we are going to get from the others, and we need 5,000 minimum before we do the crewed space plane one. Um, I'll hang on to the Jupiter observation program for now because it's got one more orbital, but it'll take years to do that. Anyway, we'll decide that after this mission. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. We have one engine that failed to ignite. Okay. Alright, well... Yeah, well these are the Vikings and... Well, oh, they're the Viking 2s? I thought I put Viking 5s on here. Shoot. I forgot what the Viking 5s. Okay, uh... Roll back. Uh, we'll just roll this back. We'll just roll this back. Okay, now with Viking 5s, uh, we'll save it there and also save edits. And I'll also edit the other one. Only takes 5 hours to put the Viking 5s on. Well, at least Barbell doesn't have to retrain. Um, we need more staff here, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we need more staff here. I had reduced staff before. Okay, uh, we should probably start training somebody else right now. We will go with when they are going to retire. So that uh, after Barbell, it's Muhammad. All right, here we go. SAS on, throttle up, ignition. Well, now they're all on. And launch. Lots of TWR with this. Barbell looks thrilled. <laughs> Lots of TWR, but not a lot of peak TWR. So G-forces are restrained. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. <gasps> okay, well, um... I, I don't think it's meant to fly like this, but... Um... Okay, we need bigger fins. Barbell's mission has just dramatically changed. Oop. Oh, 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 we destabilized the engines. Oops. I do want to use up the fuel. Oh, did they have a more permanent problem? Well, maybe I have to reset. Ah, why is it paused? Oh, other things were exploding. That's why it was paused. Okay. Ah, uh, they... Okay, activate. No, no, no. Both engines fail to ignite. Why? Gosh darn it. We'll, we'll light these then. Uh, I'll dump the hydrolocks. Hope nobody minds. Okay. Seriously though. Okay, stop. Can you go away now? Alright. It's hard already. One of those is wrong. 
Okay, okay. Eh. Alright, we're down safely. Well, that was a heck of an emergency, huh? Okay. Recover vessel. Normal recovery. Yeah, looks like it's uh, not particularly well balanced in this sort of situation. Okay, uh, Barbell should definitely get a rest. We'll also shift him down a bit more. I mean, the Gimbling should handle that, but we don't have a whole lot of engine gimbal after these go out. We just have the one Vulcane. We, we, in particular, don't have great roll control at that point, so that's a bit of a problem. Hmm. Oh, increasing the size of these actually put us... Well, we increased the pad limit anyway, so... Yeah. Maybe, since we increased the pad limit, maybe I should make the boosters a little bit bigger. It's weird, you would have thought that the taller rocket would have been the more problematic one as far as flipping. No, I'm gonna duplicate this. Feel like we should be doing other stuff at the same time though. Okay, a little bit dark around here, but... Here goes Muhammad. Yeah, really dark around here. Okay. Well, Muhammad, you saw how that went. Uh... I don't have any SAS. Well, good thing's that a good thing I have oodles of unlock credit, so I don't even care about tooling anymore. Alright, let's hope it all works out. SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, let us be cautious. The initial thrust weight ratio definitely was a problem last time. Uh, just oh 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 no 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 ah it's still a problem. Okay, we have too many boosters. We have too many boosters. It's weird to say that, but no, well, I'll take one. Now, obviously, it's not very efficient down here. Up, things have blown up. What is it? 240 seconds of ISP down here. But anyway. Raining debris on the Space Center. Maybe the Arcturus VL is not such a good idea. But I think it's mainly the enormous thrust weight ratio that we have of it. That's the problem. So I think is we'll have two boosters that are bigger, and we'll just tool new tanks for them. And so those two boosters will just have one engine apiece, we won't have so much thrust to weight ratio. Lacks the sort of redundancy that we had with the Deneb A4 though, which had lots of engines all over the place. Well, we'll cut it there. For flying, we really don't need that much wing. We probably could do with less than this. It's the whole, we actually need to slow down during re-entry thing that's the problem. And we've seen that that's in a bit of an issue. Otherwise, there's certainly plenty, even when we have fuel in. Touchdown. Well, I think we can do without the drag shoots. Especially since they're probably still not symmetrical. Okay, well, Muhammad's back. Uh, well, again, a little bit quicker than expected. But, alright, we'll just uh, nope, recover a vessel like this. Well, here we go again, this time with Thomas O'Connor who looks sort of like uh, Chris Hadfield there. 
And you might say, well, there's a heck of a thing to do with Kerbals. We could be testing this with just the controller without a Kerbal inside, but well, it has been interesting anyway, and they haven't perished, so we will continue. But obviously there's just a sort of balance issue, which is strange in a way, but maybe it's just the gimbling on the Vulcane engine is limited. We had a lot more engines controlling stuff previously. Uh, so anyway, now we have just two engines, so we won't have as high a thrust weight ratio, and hopefully that'll help. And uh, we just have the two boosters, Viking 5s, and that will be a little bit more restrained so we don't have so much dynamic pressure. All right, so it's about a thrust weight ratio of 1.3 at liftoff. So ignition. And launch. I also increased the size of the fins. Probably it was just the severe thrust weight ratio we had, but we'll see. It seems a little bit wobbly right now, to be honest. Maybe the fins are too big. Um, see, I, it's something about, I think, it's just not controlling right. It starts wobbling a bit too... Maybe I should just try atmospheric autopilot with it. Um, you know what, uh, for once, let's try the parachute. I should try the ejection seat, which technically it has. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't have the time to worry about landing the thing again. That takes a long time. Whoa, I don't know if that's safe or not, but okay. There goes the plane. Yeah, I don't know. I something about Mechjub does not. I mean, it should work. I mean, it's it's actually less top heavy with the control surfaces and the wing surfaces than the Denev A4 was. It, it's stouter. It has uh, more fins at the bottom. Just something ain't working right. So I don't know. I could have brought it back to the runway, but just didn't want to bother with that. So this is taking a while too. I mean, the den of A4 is definitely bigger compared to the little space plane. Oh, fell on his face anyway. Even though it was going so well, still fell. Okay, recover. I think we'll just go with the Denna Bay 4. We'll, we'll build one of each. We'll continue building this Arcturus VL, but I'll get a old style one. It's sort of crazy though, this is three times the launch mass of the other one. But I guess that makes it sturdier and less likely to flip? I don't know. Uh, if you take a look at the center mass and center lift, it's like that. The other one, they're much closer together. Is this leaning to one side, or is it just me? Anyway, uh, well, anyway, it has worked out before. It has less delta V <laughs> somehow than the other one, even though the other one is so much less mass. You know what, we've been getting some extra confidence with all these failures, apparently. Uh, I'm gonna complete the Jupiter observation thing uh, later. Yeah, we're not getting any benefit from that. Uh, so we really ought to be doing something else. But I wanted that to be the Earth Space Station thing. But maybe we should take something else that we can do quickly. Well, well, I mean, the Venus landing shouldn't be too bad, right? I'm not going to spend any confidence points on it. But... It's not requiring a rover, unlike the Mars one. I mean, a rover wouldn't survive very long anyway. You might as well get this uh, this funding, because we're not getting very good funding right now from anything else. Uh, yeah, let's knock out the Venus surface. Yeah, we'll activate that program. As long as there's no catches. Atmospheric probe. 
transmits data there that's optional that gives us 600 of those uh, confidence points though doesn't say we can't do both does it let's just do the landing first but maybe we can do both, both at the same time. Oh yeah, we can do both at the same time. Well, let's go for that. Okay. Got a window in 212 days. I'll cook up a uh, launch for that after we try this Maya B. Okay, it will be Barbell Kerman again. Okay. SAS on. Throttle up. It should work normally, right? Uh, it's not gonna suddenly start flipping out on me. Right, Mac Jab? Uh, Mac stopping time doesn't look too weird. Hopefully it'll just work the way it normally does. So, ignition. And launch. I'm trying to be very conservative about the turn because I'm afraid of flipping now. So we're going very steep. Probably unnecessary, but geez. They seem pretty good at gambling. Okay. Mitigation of G forces. Though not much, not by much. Still gonna have pretty high G's here. Okay, booster set. Okay, well, I might have gone a little bit too high there. Actually, let's just coast for a bit. And then try to mitigate this whole situation. Okay, went a little bit higher than necessary, but it should be all right. We'll just uh, get to periapsis and bring it down. And yeah, we have plenty of extra delta V here, more than we need. So that's going well. So, um,. Hmm. We'll just do one orbit. We'll come straight back down. Let's not leave her in orbit for a whole day. I'm gonna go with one or in 76 degrees east. But we do have some extra fuel here. We're heavier than last time. I'll go with 42. It can't be that much different, right? Right? <laughs> Okay, we are definitely in the atmosphere below 120 kilometers. And I'm gonna switch to looking at the pitch. I'm expecting to have to move the fuel back, but I'll wait until it's necessary. There's a little bit of a yaw going on though. Okay, yeah, moving the fuel back. It is a lot more fuel than usual, though. We have the engine overheating, per usual. Uh, will the engine survive this time? Again, we are heavier. Uh, it's definitely overheating more than normal. More than last time. I hate when things happen differently. <laughs> Last time, we definitely got less heat. 
Told you with a curl on board it's tougher. I'm gonna dump the hydrolocks. I mean, I guess that means we have less thermal mass, but I mean, it's also good not to have so much mass. But we do have to use more pitch up like this, especially since we lost the engine in the back. And the wings are overheating. And the canards for some reason. I didn't even notice the canards overheating previously. Hmm. There's definitely more overheating overall. Why must it be like this? Maybe it was the 42 kilometers instead of 40, but sheesh. Okay, well, coming down from the bounce up, 82 kilometers. Tentatively, it looks like the cumulative overheating on the cabin is not as much, but the sudden overheating of the engine was too much. Uh, we'll see. It's, it is overheating, and it's, the bar is getting longer. We just need to get down soon. <laughs> Need to figure out how to get down soon. I've got a fizz warp here. Almost there. I don't know if we can land at the KSC, but we're close. Close to that. But last time I said that, when we're coming back from orbit with this, we blew up first. <laughs> so we need to hurry up and get down. Okay, well, we're sort of overshooting now, but I'm gonna pitch down a bit. We gotta try the brakes. Yeah, we're definitely overshooting. It's going to be interesting. I think it's right there. If we, you know, had jet engines, then it'd be fine, but we'll just prioritize landing it on the ground somewhere. Even that's going to be a chore. We're heading over water. It's dangerous, but I'm gonna try and control it with atmospheric autopilot soon. And we'll try to get it somewhere decent. I'm switching. Should I turn around this way? Should probably turn around the other way. I think if I wanted to get back to KSC, I should have not had the air brakes out for quite so long. Oh, I see a little marker there. A hundred kilometers. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. We are higher up than a normal airliner and going faster than a normal airliner. So, hundred kilometers might, be, might not be too bad a glide. No, I think it'll be all right. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try and do a U turn. We've got too much speed to fly straight in like this, I believe. Speed and height, energy. Too much energy. Okay, uh, I think I need to dive here. Okay, we might have too much energy still, but I'm going to try and turn around and head towards the runway. Alright, so we should have retroburned a little bit earlier, but we might be adjusting the retroburn height the way things went. Maybe we'll go back to 40, so in that case we'll have to do it even earlier than that. Okay, landing gear. Uh -huh. 
So once again, we ask ourselves, do we trust this space plane? It hasn't killed a Kerbal today, but but we did lose an engine and there, there are signs of other issues here. not free and clear that's for sure okay we are down seems to be a bump in the runway okay okay it's not a big bump all right okay well barbell's back from orbit it was successful question mark and we will recover vessel it should count as the sub suborbital one now all right well we got some more confidence it looks like and we can just go ahead and pick up the first orbital space plane flight. Does that that doesn't give any extra confidence? Well, that was what I was worried about. Okay, so yeah, that was intense with the failures and the whole business of having having to fly those back. Well, we got it done to, again with an asterisk, and we'll have to see. But next time I'll cook up that Venus mission and we'll see about sending that over to Venus while also continuing to construct more Maya space planes to continue with these space plane contracts from the space plane program. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.